Hello YouTube. I, um, I thought I'd do an update video on this bioactive leopard gecko enclosure. Um, this is basically take three on hopefully keeping plants alive. Uh, every single plant that's in here at the minute is all is all new. All the ones from the previous video have actually uh, died out. A few reasons I can think of is uh, is being eaten by the cleanup crew, the super worms in particular, or um, the placements where I've been putting them. This is the hot side. A lot of hot goes warmer and then cooler. And if you don't put the plants in the right place, if they not don't like too much heat, for example, they'll dry out and die. So this time I've done a little bit more uh, studying into the plants where where they like to be. So these two don't mind a bit of heat; they can withstand the the high temperature. And then this this side, these these prefer to be on the more cooler side. Um, I decided to put a little bit of food out. See if I can get the blue beetles out. Blue death farm beetle. There's one there. With a super worm beetle. Both eating some food. So yeah, so the the warm hide, um I've re redesigned it a little bit to allow the gecko to come out through the back here. And you can lie on, on top of the slate here and get all belly heat if you want to. You can also go down through the back and come back in that way as well. Um, you can see it's a little bit dark under there where you can lie in the daylight if you, if you want a little bit of extra heat from the um, from the from the top because it gets quite quite warm on top of there much warmer than inside. Um, just that option for him if he decides he wants that extra bit of heat. Um, the gecko is currently. I'm sure you can see him. No, it's a little too dark in there right now. But he's yeah, he's I can see him, but you guys might have trouble. But he is lying underneath there. I wonder if I can hide it. Ah. No, I'm not going to be able to get him for you guys. But yeah, he's he's lying underneath there. Yeah, so some of the new plants. I'm not going to butcher the names because I will absolutely wreck them. But yeah, th these are succulents. I do know that. There's another one. Um, Water dish is still in the same place. Got his wet hide here. This is where the isopods like to go as well in the spring tails. One focus. Here we go. They go in there, nice and wet. So on the cooler side, I've got some more succulents here, and then the green one as well. Big green one, I should say. And then I created a new hide as well, underneath that slate, goes deep down into the substrate. Um, I used the R for coconut, and then put a slate on top of it, so we can get down inside there, nice and cool. Uh, it goes quite deep as well into the substrate. That's another thing what I did do as well, I added an extra bag of substrate, so it's, it's, um, it's much more deeper now as well, so the plants get a better, hopefully, root deep down. Um, so he's just going back to him before he disappears. This is the male. There's six of them all together. He's the little male. There's one of the females behind there. And there's five of them as well. They're, bi they're, they're bigger than, than the male. These guys, these are the pains. So I would definitely recommend if you're going to do a bioactive enclosure probably not to add them super worms beetles the super beetles and, they, and obviously you get the worms from them that turn into the beetles these guys are absolutely ruthless they will eat everything they're just too good at the job basically if if however you don't care about plants and you have a background that's, you know, that they're not going to be able to bite through. Like a lot of people use, um, like a foam background and you, you block over it. This is not foam. This is like a sort of a plastic with like a rocky effect. Really, really good effect. Um, they can't bite through that, but they definitely can bite through the plants. So I would definitely um, 
recommend not using them as a clean up crew, these black ones. Don't don't use them. They're a pain. I've actually reduced the population. Thankfully they're really good at eating so they're very easy to catch. Um but yeah I, I, I highly recommend that you would not use them unless you don't care about plants. If the plants are not a, not your you don't care about them by all means add them in because they are super good at what they do the worms especially they will move up all the soil um air for a little bit better uh, and the beetles will obviously do do they do their thing as well um i've still got the t-rex skull he's currently here i buried them deep down as well with just a tip sticking through um yeah i can actually do it Brightness, there we go. I wonder if I do that for the, the lizard now as well. See if I can get them for you. Yeah, you can see them barely. Yeah, it's really, it's really bright in here, so obviously it's going to have a hard time going to the dark, um, dark cave. Because this um, jungle dawn light is absolutely amazing. Um, you can see just how bright that actually is, and this is the daytime brightness. It really, really shines up and brings up the daylight. And I have them all on automatic, going off at different, different times, to simulate um, the sun going down, the sun coming up. You know, they go off at different times, and then it leaves the um, the UVB on. The UVB is in the corner there, and I'm using a DP project, um, DP projector as the heat. Yeah, so back onto here, I have um, three uh, air plants. These guys are doing all right. This one's maybe sorry. Let's just this one's maybe a little, little dry. I could do it probably giving it a good water, but this one and this one, they're doing really well. Uh, very easy to look after. They don't require going into the soil, so less chance to get any in. Um, yeah, they they're doing they're doing quite good. Um, yeah, the T-Dex goes here, another plant, there's, um, over in the corner here is where he, where he does his, um, his poo poo, and obviously that gets eaten that easy, like quick, because every, everything can eat is very hungry. <laughs> um, behind here is another entrance to that way, so it's just multiple areas yeah i'm kind of sorry that you can't it's quite dark but you know that's the way it says up to be you know we can get you can go through through underneath here and you can come back out you can climb up you know it's just given this at the end of the day this is the gecko's home so you cater for them rather than not everything is for your own taste you got to make sure that these guys are happy um in terms of the the warm hard there's four entrances you got like one here you got this one that he uses the most you got this one down here and then you got this one here as well and then on top there's the entrance through the back back here and then he's obviously got this entrance down there as well that he that he started using um yeah other than the plant issue this is take three on the plant hopefully i can keep these ones alive the rest of the enclosure is actually doing really, really well. Uh, the gecko is doing, doing well. He's becoming into his adult weight now. Uh, last last weight was 90, 90 grams. So, yeah. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I might do an update video in a couple of weeks' time or a couple of months' time just to see how these plants are doing. Hopefully, um, I can definitely keep these alive. I've done a little bit more studying. All of these plants only need to be watered probably twice a month. So that's another mistake I was making. I was actually maybe a little too too aggressive with the watering. Or I put the plants in the wrong area, like I said before. You know, having the ones that like to be more cooler, putting them onto the, the side where it's too warm for them. But, um, but yeah, I really like the look of this one. Hopefully it can stay alive. <laughs> Um, but time will tell. We'll we will see. While well, these guys just ease away. 
I'd, I'd be much prefer they just had that food rather than eating the plants. That would be. That would be great if they did that. But yeah. That's the leopard gecko bioactive enclosure. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.